it's Sunday, everyone, and welcome back to Elsa's nope hey, crowns. The fuck was that? Magical crypto cave. <laughs> well, well, well. Welcome back to Crowns Crypto Cave. It's a nice uh, Sunday morning over here from Chicago, Illinois. Got a good night of sleep last night, so feeling pretty damn good and uh, quite hungry as well. But I do want to talk about some magic and money before we get into some brunching activities. I'm just looking outside right now. It looks like it's about to rain and have this like hot Chicago rain. I absolutely hate that uh, during the summer especially. But you know what? It's time to focus down in on this good old Bitcoin section. So without further ado, I do want to wish you well. I do want to wish you the best of the best and the haps of the happiest. Um, I will be... Uh, uh, what else do I want to announce? No, we'll get into that later. Anyways, I'll wait, I'll wait until the end of the video. Without further ado, let's get into the uh, good old live scene right here. I'll hit up the button the teleportation. I'll see you in there, baby, with Bitcoin on the daily. And Bitcoin still kind of hanging on its lows. If you're looking at the daily on on uh, what's it called a uh, spot right here, it doesn't look all that impressive. But uh, really, I think the chart that we should be having our eyes on is a CME chart, as uh, this one accurately kind of describing what we're looking at uh, as well on spot, but with a more precise kind of tone. And and to me, this is, you know, this is this is quite an obvious descending triangle right now, very similar to what we had during 2018. Now, of course, descending triangle more likely to break out to the downside than the upside. But like I said, I, you know, when we're talking about a counter, uh, a counter to the macro trend formation, I do like to kind of err on the side of caution. So, you know, I've seen I've seen every fucking pattern break out every way that it's not supposed to. Technically, though, descending triangle is 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 a lot more likely to break out to the downside than the upside, but that probability will be diminished in a counter trend uh, in a counter trend market, which we are in right now. We're in a general uptrend on the macro and um, printing a bearish pattern on if you want to call this like a medium to higher time frame. That's fine by me, but uh, but overall, the way to play it is the same as far as I'm concerned. If we do break out the downside of it, if we do break this horizontal right here at about 9,500, 9,400, this is on CMEs, which have about a hundred dollar. Sorry, not a hundred dollar, but a, uh, actually about a hundred dollar, a little bit. Over hundred dollar premium right now, um, so I put spot charts around like ninety four hundred ish region. If we do actually break that on, especially like a twelve hour or daily dollar closing basis, perhaps even a four hour if you're a little bit more aggressive trader, then uh, technically this would have a measure move pointed all the way down towards about sixty four hundred, as you can see right here, basically synonymous with our May, our middle of May uh, lows from this current year. Um, but for now, you know, with a triangle like this, do not underestimate the amount of times that we can bounce off the bottom side of this. I mean, during 2018, I mean, we spent so much time in that 6,000 level just pay, just playing out these piss poor bounces each and every time getting weaker and weaker and weaker. But very, very frustrating for the bears who were eventually right, of course. Um, and of course, on this channel, we were waiting for that for a long time. I mean, shit, man, we, I started this channel in like, uh, I think, May. It, 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 no, it was March. It was March of 2018. And we were talking about that breakdown the whole way through. But the actual time to take a trade wasn't even until like October November. Anyways, I want to I want to shuttle down now here to the lower time frames, as we spoke about um, this during the during the video yesterday, and we got the test. We uh, we said that it was likely to come back down to this 9400ish level right here. We got that test, then we popped back up and we got the slingshot back up to about 9700. So both those targets were met on the lower time frames, even though we don't feel it too you know all that confident on them, just because. You know, lower time frame bullshit. You know, it, it, it's 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 fleeting, it's floating essentially. Um, but to me, it looks like Bitcoin actually wants to come back down here and sweep the lows once again at around 9450ish region uh, on the lower time frames. Four hour Stokes going to be coming down. Four momentum oscillators on all time frames actually coming down um, on the lower time frames. I should say we got four hour coming down. Three hour right here is going to oh actually coming up very interesting. Uh, two hour what's two hours saying? Two hours down. And what about hourly? Hourly is going to be down as well. So three hours kind of the ottoman out tells me that we're likely to come back down in this region right here and. And, uh, and at the very least, give it another test. By the same token, as you can see, we are nearing the danger zone once again, which anytime that we get down here, you know, bulls have to kind of hold their breaths as uh, if this one breaks, that's a big one to me. Um, however, if you're looking at the lower time frame, so I wouldn't call a breakage of, I wouldn't call a formal breakage of it until we get a four hour dollar closing really below about 90, let's call it 93.50 to be a little more conservative. I really think that this should be only be played on like a 12 hour or a daily when we're talking about the greater formation, because this is a formation that's happened over the last like two and a half to almost three months now. Um, um, we really want to see something more, you know, some, something more powerful kind of tip it over if that is what's going to happen. But I still kind of help, you know, I still kind of hold to what I've been saying over the past uh, week or so, you know, likely to come back down here in the lower time frames. Yes, we do see that. But I don't believe that the higher time frames actually have the momentum to break this to the downside from its current posture. And the reason why I say that is because our 12 hour and our daily are both suggesting that we're kind of, you know, you know, we're kind of in a uh, we're kind of, we're kind of in a supporty ish area. Uh, that's not even a word, but we do see 12 hour stoves cross the upside that was confirmed with the last. Uh, with the last tick that we just got about uh, where's my phone phones over here let me actually charge this because now I realize that I actually <laughs> I don't even have a phone right now um, but that was about an hour ago 
So this is confirmed to the upside right now. And uh, 12 hour stocks have been pretty damn good in getting the overall momentum in this consolidation. Now, you will remember that uh, we did actually have a cross the upside not so long ago, about a week ago on the 24th right here. And now it's coming at this level of support, which ended up being, you know, which ended up dropping off. But now that's, you know, a little bit lower and coming off in coming off a major, major support in this region right here, I would say that that likely does align with this kind of flipping back around and at least testing back up a little bit uh, towards this first blue box territory right here at around 97.50 to about 98 or sorry 9750 to about 9850 in this in this uh, hundred dollar region right here let me actually just shuffle it over right there there we go and if we can break that to the upside which you know does bitcoin have the, you know does, you know does bitcoin have the strength to do that right now i you know i i i, I think it would be good to do something like that as it would get rid of the over aggressive shorters right now um and probably work its way back up to like you know low tens maybe 10 4 10 5 over the next week i think that that's actually quite uh, quite a likely possibility but first things first this area needs to break to the upside and it's kind of like a race against time which one breaks first the lower blue box or the upper blue box and the upper ones doesn't really do all that much for the bulls the problem for the bulls right now is that no matter how high we get here as long as we're below especially especially 10.5 and even 11,000 uh pressures onto the downside a lot of pressure is mounting here and because we are in a bearish formation i mean you know you do have to you have to you have to pay a lot of credence to that as a trader i mean shipman we could come all we could pop all the way up to the top side of this triangle resistance which would whoa hey what was that hey what's up Blake? uh uh who is that lone man good to meet you man welcome to the cave my friend um um, we do see, you know, on the daily right here for the for the greater formation, you know, e, uh, you know, even as long as we're below like 11.2, we're still, you know, we're still living under the ultimate resistance of this. So, like I said, again, just because we're in a descending triangle does not mean that we're always going to break out to the downside. I've seen plenty of descending triangles break out to the upside, especially in ca in macro uh, in, in counter macro trend formations. But <laughs> as a trader, I take this one step at a time, no matter which way that we break, just because, well, it's, you know, I'm a little bit more on the conservative side, a little bit more of a pussy trader, if you want to call it that. Fair enough. You know, I, I don't I don't disagree. Um, that's not really my game anymore. But uh, but looking at this, you know, you do see that our next major resistance coming in right around 10,000 on CMEs. I remember, this has about 100 to 150 dollar premium on it. So that's really like matching up with about 90 to 50 on spot. And you can see it's so much easier here on CMEs, right? Then if that area gets taken out to the upside, we do see that uh, we have a little bit more of an interim resistance right here, right around about 10.4, 10.5. So I'd be looking for a Bitcoin on spot to kind of pop up there. If we actually can confirm above this resistance, a four hour deal to close above there would be good enough for me. And um, and then of course, if we can get back above there, then 11,000 is kind of the next area that I look towards. And that's pretty much going to be synonymous with the ultimate resistance right here. So if Bitcoin does start to, you know, play out this bounce a little bit more, um, you know, I'd have my eyes intently on this area right here. Now, of course, everyone's looking at the same thing right now. Everyone's looking at this as a descending triangle now or a triangle of some sorts. And it's no major secret, right? So whenever we get a formation like that, the best thing to do is is to wait for is to wait for like ultimate confirmation on the on a de you know on a decent time frame. For me, a decent time frame really means like you know a twelve hour or a daily at the very least. Um, you know, <laughs> compared to like some people on like an hourly, which fair enough, you know, you can make it work. Although you're going to be suspect to or subject to a lot more fuckery, right? Anyways, um, with this right here, that's kind of what I want to say is, you know, patience is the name of the game here. Remember, we will have an apex on this triangle coming in um, October. So if we're having an apex in October, then that means that somewhere right around here in early September is when we're actually extremely likely to break it. So this would put us around September 12th, just, you know, uh, you know, just kind of give a date for it. Um, but anywhere around here, you know, around 60, 9% full is where they become extremely, extremely likely to break from a uh, statistical narrative. Um, again, uh, direction independent on that one. Uh, but looking at our momentum also, there's like I said, the 12-hour Stokes and uh, in daily Stokes kind of getting down. Whoops, I guess this is, uh, that's still that's still CMEs, but this is your daily and we already look at the 12-hour, which are which are crossing up right now. You know, if we can actually get some momentum based upon that, get back above 90 to 50, then yeah, you know, I'd look for this bounce probably play back out into the uh, into the mid 10,000-ish region, just frustrate people some more. You know, again, at the end of the day, man, I, you know, I, I, I think I've been pretty consistent with this over the last uh, few weeks that while Bitcoin is printing a massive formation here, you know, we're not going to have resolution still and you know for like another week week and a half maybe um you know for like the actual trend traders they've been just sitting in there you know sit you know sitting the sitting there in the seats with their dicks in their hands apparently um as i check my phone right now jesus christ man god damn <laughs> this, <laughs> this fucking messages are getting way too overwhelming right now um 
although I don't want to sound, I don't want to sound unappreciative of, of course I do appreciate it, but man, uh, <laughs> just don't get mad at me if it takes a little bit of time to get to them. Uh, that, that's, that's the only time when it really gets weird. Anyways, going back to CMEs, just because I think that they do have the easier chart to read. Let's go check out the weekly because it did, uh, obviously it did set and of course the monthly as well. And let's kind of compare that with spot in a second here. But looking at the weekly, we did, I mean, could you consider this a test of the 21 X benchmark damage here? Yes, you could. You could certainly, you could certainly consider that, but the closure, not that good overall. Um, any sort of a tick below our current low at 9,400 on CMEs. And remember they will be opening up later tonight at 6 PM Eastern time. Then I'd be looking for, you know, I'd be looking for the next push down into like the 8,900 ish level, most likely, uh, for the downside, looking at momentum also, we do see weekly stokes on CMEs coming down all the way to the uh, neutral control zone. Uh, but that's not really telling us too much. Same thing with RSI. In fact, the weekly actually not giving us all that much as far as momentum also does go. We need to go to spot for that. And for on spot, we do see something very interesting from the weekly stoke perspective coming back all the way on over here from October, 2016, we do see that uh, when Bitcoin really started to wind up and gain momentum towards its ultimate destination of 20,000 bucks from this price point of about 600 bucks, you saw, you saw a very specific signature on the weekly stokes, which is what you can expect to see where essentially the weekly stokes will come down to like the edge of the bullish control zone, like just dipping its toesy woesies into the neutral zone for a second, and then gets picked up and like wound up over the next few years. So <laughs> while Bitcoin does this essentially, well, as you can see right now, if we were to put in a horizontal trend line right here and kind of mark this area off, you can see that the weekly stokes are currently in that same exact posturing. So we are in that area um, of, you know, of, of, of interest. And if the bulls are going to pick it up from here, this, you know, this would be the area to do it from alongside a major support on a major, you know, on a major formation. And in fact, I do believe even coming back all the way on over from here um, during, during that 2016 time, we actually were printing, well, were we printing a descending triangle, descending triangle? I mean, of course, it looks like it's, it, the problem with it is, is that if I draw it like this, it looks like it, it looks like a descending triangle, right? Um, but what is it really at the end of the day? Well, it's really something more like this, where we're actually doing this at the end of the day. And it's really more of an ascending triangle. So it's a, so it's a ascending triangle that doesn't break to the downside and then morphs into an ascending triangle and breaks the upside, right? And that's exactly what I mean by looking at counter trend formations uh, to, uh, to the overall macro trend. In this, in, this, in this situation, we were certainly very much to the upside. We just got our first pop coming out of the 2014, 2015 bear mark cycle. And, uh, and yes, you know, we did have a descending triangle right here, but failure to break to the downside although we did have a pretty nasty washout on this uh on on you know on this wick right there pretty nasty um you know eventually just floats this way onwards and upwards uh, after failure to break to the downside so i would say that the longer that bitcoin kind of you know grinds this area out and does not break the better but again you know pressure is on and it's you know it's i'm, I'm really you, you really have to err on the side of caution or at least of course it's not financial advice i'm not a french advisor but i would be erring on the side of caution during um during price action like this anyways uh, taking this back off and going back into the you know uh, into the more in, in the more present times, I suppose. Uh, looking at the weekly right now for Bitcoin, uh, not looking all that hot. I mean, if we close like this, looks to me like we'd probably want to have continuation more than anything else. But again, still you know I'd, I'd still want to see the levels hit. More importantly, those take precedence over everything else. Uh, you, no matter you know no matter what your analyst says right now, it's just <laughs> until we actually break something, it, you're. It, it, it's 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 all speculation until that happens again and this is coming from someone who trades as a living and i'll tell you that straight up as when you're looking at it from this for, um, from this perspective right here 100 speculation um as it is it's not until we actually get the break where you know where uh, where there's actual potentials and of course if you want to you know if you want to trade the supporting resistance i think that's completely fine as well i took a couple of trades last night um based upon just the uh, j uh just a test down in that area that we spoke about yesterday pops up a couple uh what was it like 300 bucks just a second later <laughs> so that you know there's your quick $300 trade for the day, but uh, now kind of curling back down. So to me, again, to kind of wrap up the lower time frames, looks to me like it wants to pop back down, probably test around this blue box territory, somewhere around like 9450-ish region, maybe maybe even reaches all the way down to 9350 to the bottom end of the territory. But I do think, I don't think that it's ready to break just yet. I do think that it'd actually be another bounce from this region and probably pop back up and test this region here. Um, but it, it goes it goes without saying that all these lower time frames. I mean, all these bounces get weaker and weaker, right? So you know, if we actually do break to the downside right here, it's going to be a flushing price action. So let's actually talk about this for a second. Um, as I haven't really flushed out this idea just yet, or at least not on this video, I suppose. But uh, but looking at this right here, you know, we do have one mass for descending triangle. No matter which way you kind of cut it, if you want to use wicks, that's fine. If you want to use bodies, that's fine. It's going to give you the same thing essentially here. Um, but more importantly. You know, we would have a measure move down, and that would point us somewhere down around the uh, what was it like uh, uh, 60, 6500 ish region, technically speaking. But like I said, I I really don't put actually all that much weight on um, on formations that 
or I mean, it's not that I put, it's not that I don't put that much weight on them, but it's, I put less weight on, on counter trend to the macro trend formations um, to hit their ultimate target if they are going to have one. And uh, what I do is I will, is I'll look at all the major levels along the way and kind of judge that and, 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 and look at them as potential reversal zones. Very, 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 very high probability of bouncing. And with each and every bounce, you know, uh, you know, I keep my eyes open and, and, and heart open for, for potential reversal. Uh, some like this would look like the next major area is about 8,900, probably confluent with the weekly 21 expansion moon average. Oh my God, what is this? Yes, it is. We see it right in over here at about, uh, at about 9,000, 8,950 to 9,000-ish region. Um, so that'd be the first potential area that I'd be looking for. Although, you know, I do think that a Bitcoin is going to break down here. Probably doesn't just, you know, go there just to pop back up. Uh, that would be a pretty, that, you know, that would be a pretty obvious bear trap if that would happen. Uh, the next, the next most likely area would be this guy right here, right around the uh, purple 200 expansion moon average, which is about 8,400, coming up to 8,500 over the next few days, I'd imagine. That area is very interesting to me because not only would it be matching up with the 200 expansion moon average on the daily, but it'd also be matching up with the um, with the 0.5 Fibonacci retracement taken from the ultimate low to the ultimate high of this run thus far at around 8,500 region. Not only that, but if we go back on over here to CMEs, you'll notice, or you'll probably remember, the Gap Boys will definitely tell you that they remember that uh, uh, Gap coming in from, uh, what was it, 13th of June of, of this current year, right around 8,500-ish uh, 8, level as well. So I do kind of like that. Um, overall, I'm curious from a historical standpoint, though, does Bitcoin like to play off the 200 exponential moon average on these bullish dumps, if you want to call it that? Uh, but let's just scroll on, just let's just scroll on in backwards and see what the kind of uh, past market cycle did. And we do see that, you know, especially coming in that same area that we're looking at on the weekly, that kind of matches up with what we see on spot right now. We actually do come down and test the purple 200 exponential moon average a few times um, along the way, and that usually is the area, so to speak. You see a couple, a, a, a few weeks down here. You see a test down here. You see a wick down here and then after that doesn't really test it until the high is really put in but it would give us another kind of area of um, of kind of, of of kind of gauging the the greater trend if you want to call that um, if Bitcoin starts to break below that big problems if Bitcoin starts to break below the 21 exponential moon average out you know I'd also kind of suggest probably big problems as well um, of course if that are, you know while I would be looking for a bounce off that area uh, if that bounce fails then next next territory I look down towards is around nine, or sorry 74 to 7500 also confluent with the uh, white 200 simple and blue 377 exponential moon average both very important for long-term uh, trend identification and then after that then we can talk about the full-on measure move getting hit down towards 6500 so remember these things don't happen at the snap of fucking fingers like that but uh, you know it does kind of set the trajectory so if I was, you know, if, 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 if we do see this break to the downside right here, um, that's, you know, that's kind of the path that I would see. Uh, like I said, I don't, you know, I, I, I'd, I'd keep an open, I'd, I'd keep open eyes for each and every one of these bounces to potentially turn into reversal. But technically that would be the measure move for it. Um, we still do see that, or sorry, I forgot to kind of uh, mention this as well, but um, we do see that uh, volume's kind of dropping off from left to right, right on over here in this in this triangle. So it tells us that the triangle is still yet to be resolved, but we are getting damn close to resolution time as each and every day, each and every passing day, this tightens up a little bit more. And we still see the kind of like the same signature on this about early-ish to mid-ish September, somewhere, somewhere in the next week to week and a half is likely where I look for resolution on this. Um, we should also see volatility uh, uh, um, oscillators uh, kind of tell us what's going on in historical volatility percentile still down trending right here we gave a little test to the volume moving average or sorry the volatility moving average right here yeah uh, and that's exactly where we stopped off and then still down trending so to me that's telling us that we're still tightening up the overall greater formation that's exactly what you expect to see let's go down to a 12 hour and see how this one's doing 12 hour is actually getting quite low right now as you can see and uh, coming from the same area which is what you would expect um but more importantly really really tightening up and getting below even like the uh, 30 the 30 marker right here which the last time that we were even below this region was actually coming back from march of this current year which this was when bitcoin was going sideways in this formation right here remember just kind of crawling itself out of the uh, current lows at around 3100 and uh, then getting ready for a blast off for like 3000 4000 bucks to the upside jesus christ man powerful moves right there um, but more importantly this this, this 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 is telling us that when we do see this expand as this that's how these things are designed <laughs> these that's i mean it's just the fucking mass of it um when we do see expand, we're likely going to see a a pretty fucking volatile move, um, ju just by the nature of getting this low first before actually you know seeing the expansion of it. Uh, of course, you know a few other times before you know that we got this low was basically November before the dooms dropped down is down from six thousand to three thousand. We'd have a lot of signals during um, during twenty eighteen. These were like you know these were the highs and the lows of this of you know of this formation right here. Um, but for the most part, it's been pretty damn good. And of course, all of our lower time frames are basically either extremely low or or at lows. Uh, this is a 10 hour. You can see that 
it's 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 greatly greatly diminished uh eight hours gonna be even more so same thing right there six hour uh flat line probably come on baby show it to me you motherfucker you motherfucker come on um, i think i'm gonna have to turn off my vpn it's like killing my internet right now that is so awful, man. It's just, it's so, it's, it ruins everything. Yeah, six hours, six hours flatlining right there. I think four hours should be, uh, should be flatlining as well. And I'd imagine that all the lower time, yeah, all the lower time frames are going to be there. And the four hour actually really has a nice orderly drop off here as well. So this has been a long time coming. And this does suggest that the, what, if, if we do break to, to this to the downside, this is kind of the signature that you would expect if we are going to actually have basically like a 50% drop. Um, down to about 6,500. By the same token, you know, that volatility, it doesn't tell you direction. And if we do see all the momentum all sort start to turn back around, and we see that, exp uh, that and we see that volatility start to expand, well, that could actually be the impetus for forcing it back up over here. And then we get another test to the upside. And well, hopium once again, my friends. <laughs> Anyways, uh, okay, cool. So we got all of that. Um, I do want to talk about the longer term, uh, the longer term trend as well. Uh, I want to go over here to the three day and just kind of do the do the weekly checkup on the good old super gap as that has been pretty good for the long term trend of Bitcoin. Uh, again, uh, looking at this and picking it up from Fritz Murphy. <laughs> nice name. I feel like I feel like that was changed too. I don't feel like that was the name that I saw last time. Uh, but looking at but but taking off the exponentials here and just just looking at the super guppy, it's a very very e easy indicator to to rapidly pick up when it turns green. Good. When it turns red, bad. When it's gray, changing. Maybe not always. Um, but you can see over here when it when it turns green, it likes to stay green for years at a time. When it turns red, it stays year. It's it stays red for like a year at a time. Same thing here, green for for a few years, and then once again we went red during 2018, of course, and then and then more recently we went green um, in basically June of 2019. So so it's been relatively recent that we actually turn uh, turn up the color. Which keep in mind, historically speaking, this you know once it turns green, it likes to stay green for a year at least at least a year at most, or sorry, at least a year at minimum is what I meant to say um, within this region right here. Thing is, if we really start to if we really start to hang it down even a little bit lower than like uh, 8,500, we actually will start to turn this bitch red. So keep that in mind. I do want to take a sip of this water though, just one second as I as as, uh, as I take a nice swig. Oh man. I feel like I got a good sleep last night, but uh, but I need to wait for my brain to turn on a little bit. Looking at my other screen over here as well, and man, there is this amazing, amazing YouTube channel that I found. It's called like Stories of Old, and it does like uh, it 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 talks about philosophy ingrained into movies. And it's so fucking interesting. Holy shit. Um. Anyways, with regards to the super gap, yeah, we did. You know, we did turn green recently. You'd kind of expect that historically to remain green for you know for quite some time. But more importantly, if we do start to really violate that 8,500-ish level, we actually will turn this red once again, which would be a which would really start to shape this up as a massive bull trap. Now, speaking of bull trap, let's get on over to the monthly, which a lot of people are looking at right now, and for good reason because the monthly well holds a lot of weight. And get off there, super guppy, you disgusting fucker. And let's put on the exponentials. There we go. And simples. And thus far, we have still yet to break the prior wicks of the, uh, you know, uh, uh, of our prior closing months, right? Our last week coming in at 90 50-ish region, essentially on uh, on stamp. Now, there's a couple of competing narratives that I see going on here. First and foremost, I do see that the red 10 simple moon average is rapidly approaching the yellow 21 exponential moon average. If we see that cross the upside, I would actually be bullish just based upon that. That would be incredibly, incredibly good um, if we were to actually see that. But we don't, we don't have that just yet. But just uh, you know, as a historical type thing, let's go, let's go over here to BLX index and see how it's kind of done. You know, when we do see the red 10 simple above the yellow 21. It's generally when Bitcoin's trending to the upside, when they're when they're to the downside, it's kind of like during the more intense parts of the price action from a from a mark cycle perspective. They cross back up to the upside right on over here, glory times for the next couple of years. And what do we see during 2018? We see them kind of converge on each other, which tells you that the that the strength is is lessening. We actually saw them cross the downside right here before the before the ultimate explosion. Um, but that's really more more due to the fact that Bitcoin doesn't have that much price action history to really be populating something like this off of. So we have to keep a little bit more of an artist interpretation of it. And I would say that's uh, if we do see this next one cross the upside, which sorry, BLX is not going to show them as close because it hasn't updated just yet, but Stamp certainly will as it has updated for the new month. Um, then actually, would I would I would be bullish off that, and I'd be looking for wherever that cross happens to become an extremely strong base of support. Currently, that would be coming in right around about seven thousand bucks price per Bitcoin. So keep that one in mind. 
Um, and that would also suggest that if we do actually break this whole formation right here to the downside, just even by taking out the 90 50 ish wick from July to the downside, then yes, probably be looking for some base in action down around this region. That would also be consistent with the median Trollinger band right here. As you do see the 20 cent moving average represented by this uh, silver ish moving average right here coming in and meeting all these guys in the exact same place. So there's a lot of, uh, the, the, uh, there's a lot of long term structural support in this region right here. Um, so if Bitcoin did really sell down hard, that's where I'd be looking for it to come. But until we should take out this July wick low, actually, I'm 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 actually kind of split on that. I mean, technically, it's still just it's still just consolidation. That's exactly what we see on the lower time frames as well. It's just confirming the fact, and that's all well and good. I mean, it's not really telling. It's it's just telling you that we're still we're still consolidating. You know, we haven't had resolution on that just yet. And even and even more so, we do see the Trollinger bands actually converging on each other right here, which is not what you would expect to see. God damn, man, <laughs> these messages do not just. They just do not stop right now. <laughs> God damn. Um, uh, but yeah, you know, trolling bands actually converging on each other, which tells us that we are tightening up right now. We're consolidating. Um, you know, we're not really trending, actually, funnily enough. Uh, so let's actually bring up a momentum loss here and see if they see if they're showing anything right now. We do see monthly stokes actually working their way upwards and onwards, so they've gained more momentum to the upside. That's good. We don't see we uh, if 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 we were expecting to see this come back down, we would expect them to see them kind of curl over on this neck tick. They they did not do that. In fact, we see them very very similar to what we saw during 2015 2016 coming out of the bearish control zone and accurately getting all the bullish momentum from this area right here at about 400 bucks all the way to almost twenty thousand dollars price for Bitcoin. Not only that, but monthly RSI here giving us a very similar signature to what we saw during. Uh, June of 2016, where Bitcoin played out the whole bear market cycle from 2013 to 2014, of course, pops up all the way to the bullish control zone, gets rejected on the first pass, completely fine, and comes down to the exponential and gets picked up and then run up, you know, to 20,000 all the way from like what, 400 bucks, 500 bucks right here. Same sort of thing, right? In the current, in the present times, you do see a very similar, uh, similar signature. Bitcoin pops up, tests it, gets rejected from it, kind of testing around the exponential right now. Could it come down a little bit more? Certainly it could, um, but I would be looking for buys around this exponential from like a long-term perspective perspective that absolutely likely would be confluent with the with this area right here so is that you know is that a pen is is is, is that a possibility coming from this posture and yes absolutely now let's bring up the accumulation distribution indicator and see what this guy is uh, suggesting right now as this I, I actually haven't checked out today but I'm curious if we do have the positive slope we still have a positive slope so I would say that this is actually still bullish um this indicator has been phenomenal for getting the monthly direction. Um, it's not going to get, it's, it's not always perfect going the ultimate high and ultimate low, but it certainly does get the momentum extremely, extremely well. And this still having a positive slope, I would say is overall good. Um, pairing that up with the monthly jewel, also getting divergence away from, uh, you know, you know, from this signal right here, still kind of still, I mean, it's not like, it's not a perfect signal by any search of the imagination. Um, but it, you know, but it did fire up a buy like months and months ago. Um, so yeah, you know, I would say that the high, that the higher time frames are still more or less. Okay. Um, that would be, a, that would be more healthy from a long-term standpoint point um it's a lower time frames that kind of uh scare me a little bit right now anyways uh, we checked out all that let's go check out uh, looks like bitcoin's actually selling down a little bit another five dollars down holy shit what could happen now um let's go check out what else do i want to check out okay so we looked at this let's go check out um do you want to get into the fundamentals now yeah let's get into the fundamentals so first th first things first go look at uh, miners revenue i want to do some things with the miners revenue um so this is uh this th uh th this is essentially a chart representing miners revenue um, for Bitcoin, I'm going to put it into a line chart, actually, uh, something like this. There we go. Get off the exponentials and we'll just look at it like this. So this is this this is your chart represented um, miners revenue in 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 the blue right here. I'm going to put on my I'm going to put on my drawing tools, which are going to show all the levels of support and resistance built upon the major highs and major lows of each and every phase. Right. So you pop up this first time right here and um, with the in which you've with 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 each and every one, you can actually put on another horizontal. Right. So you could put on this bike right here. You could put it on another spike right here but essentially this it spikes up it comes down reaccumulates along the last low and then once it breaks back above that prior uh, you know above the prior high it will come up and do the same thing and kind of play out that same sort of behavior over time so you see this first one right here pops up boom comes down then reaccumulates pops back up comes down use it as support good pops back up breaks it and makes a new high comes back down at support okay you got it now i don't have to repeat this whole way through because we're going to be pretty fucking annoying right um um, and so, and so, if we actually overlay this with a chart of Bitcoin price action, let's use the BLX index here, and we can kind of see that this has had a pretty damn good, um, a pretty damn good uh, interplay with price action. In fact, accurately calling the lows each and every time that we do see uh, 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 that we do see the blue line chart match up with one of the horizontals, right? So we can see this first one right here coming. Well, we can see this first one right here. Boom. With this one right here matching up with this horizontal, this high right here matching up with this horizontal, this low right right here matching up with this 
this horizontal, you get the idea, right? Bitcoin breaks above this one right here. Boom, parabolic once again, right? Anyways, um, in the current trajectory of Bitcoin, <clears throat> what if what essentially have we done? Well. We came all the way up here, right? We came, we came all the way up here from our past market cycle in 2014, 2015, put in this horizontal right here. That's where we bottomed out in 2019, or sorry, 2018, 2019 right here on this test on the horizontal of the blue line chart matching up with this low on price action for Bitcoin. And what's happened, be, uh, what's happened between them? Well, now we're just kind of in that accumulation phase between the prior high and our current low, of course. And that's showing us that uh, from a historical standpoint, you know, Bitcoin, or sorry, the miners revenue chart does just that it's you know it's, it's kind of just a matter of time and the second that we actually break this right here which i'm actually going to put an alert on right now uh we'd be looking for bitcoin to to essentially break a bit uh you know essentially essentially march on towards its prior highs and price action and beyond is what we're looking for as as you can see that um as you can see the modest revenue actually does precede price action funnily enough um, anyways, go check out something else written over here, which is the Bitcoin difficulty ribbon. So this is going to be this. This speaks to the impact of minor selling pressure on Bitcoin's price action, and we don't need to go through like all of the you know all of the all, you know all of the calculations in it. I, I don't even I, I'm I'm not even the best person to ask about that. Uh, but basically. From a charting perspective, this is where it becomes a little bit more clear. We see a ribbon right here, and when the ribbon converges on each other, we see that Bitcoin is typically putting in major lows of market cycles. And when the ribbon diverges away from each other, um, you know, when it splays out like this, that's when Bitcoin is trending and trending to the upside in this case. So we have this first example right here. They converge on each other. Bitcoin's putting in its lows from 2012, essentially. And once they start to diverge right here, Bitcoin just goes fucking parabolic one, parabolic two, and and you know, and, and basically rallies to the to the heavens for the next couple of years. Then they converge on each other for the next, you know, for the next year and a half during 2013, 2014. And we put in our lows right here, so essentially as they're all kind of like touching each other. And then as they start to expand once again, we do see that Bitcoin is really gaining momentum to the upside. Then of course, during 2019, we see that they converge on each other. And what's going on right now, if we actually zoom in and pan pan towards the uh, current price action, uh, we do see that they're, that they're really gaining divergence away from each other as Bitcoin kind of carries itself up. Oops, just dropped some. What was that? Oh, <laughs> Just a little, just a little piece of shit is what it was, a little piece of garbage actually. But found it right there. There we go. Alrighty. Um, yeah. So you know, this diverging away from each other actually would suggest that Bitcoin is kind of you know gaining momentum to the upside. So is the macro is you know is the macro bullish? I mean, I would say from a fundamental perspective, actually, yes, the macro is still bullish. Um, we do you know we do see something like that. Even with big, you know, even when Bitcoin was kind of crawling, its, crawling itself out of the last uh, bear market cycle right here, we do see. Whoops, <laughs> just looking at my screen right now, realizing. Oh yeah, you can you can see the whole thing. Okay, good. Um, you know, we do we you know we do see that uh, it's it happens slowly, but yes, once they start expanding, that's when that you know that's when Bitcoin's really turning around. Um, anyways, going over here and checking out the Bitcoin network momentum, this would this would kind of represent the other side. So the Bitcoin the Bitcoin network momentum essentially looks into the value transmitted through the through uh, through the blockchain denominated in Bitcoin value plotted against Bitcoin's price. Um, so big, you know, this is the network momentum here in the brown oscillator, and Bitcoin's price is the yellow line chart. And what do we see? Well, we see a very very you know I don't need to go through the whole thing here as I've gone through before, but what I do need to go through. It's just the fact that we're still in a downtrend on this. Um, you do see that when Bitcoin start, likes to put in its lows, it, it essentially creates an uptrend. You know, we, we we put in a higher low and then a higher high on the brown oscillator. That correlates with, with Bitcoin price action. It does precede price action, to be fair. So it happens faster. But weirdly enough, we actually don't even see, We to me, it looks like Bitcoin's actually still downtrending right here. Uh, we put in a low right here. We pop up. That was, you know, you know that uh, that was a glory times of kind of putting in a low of 2019. Um but after that, the Bitcoin network momentum has just been falling flat on its face. So, is this something to you know? Is this something to consider, or 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 or, or perhaps is it you know? Is it is it is it irrelevant? Um, I mean, this would be very concerning if if we were just solely going off this, which we are not. Um, but if we were just solely going off this, this would be very concerning. But I just want to represent that the from a fundamental perspective, it's not 100. It's not 100. You know, just just all rainbows and roses and whatever the fuck that saying is. Um, if you know, if this really starts to take out the prior low, I mean, this will, would really start to look like a, a potential a potential bull trap. Uh, and if that's going to be a potential bull trap, I mean, then the people who are starting to post three thousand uh, <laughs> dollar charts once again for Bitcoin might actually be right on that. Um, but that's really, 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 really well far and away. So I don't want to scare anyone with that one with, with that right now. It's still it'd still be aeons and aeons away, really. Um, 
but uh, but something to consider, you know, perhaps going forwards here. Anyways, moving on back into Bitcoin, putting back on the moving averages, and what else do I want to uh, what else do I want to talk about? Yeah, let's talk about the Bitcoin dominance chart. Or actually, before we get into that, let's talk about crypto fear and greed. Uh, we're currently ticking out at 24. We've been really getting comfortable in the bear, you know, in, in in the extremely fearful zone. And let me just make sure that you can see that. Okay, yes, you can. Great. Um, yeah, you know, the thing is, is that Bitcoin in a general uptrend for the past six, seven months, and then and then coming down to major supports like we, you know, like we see at the 93, 9400 ish level right now, and also concurrently having an extremely fearful read on the crypto fear and greed index, which has had a phenomenal correlation with price action. In fact, I forgot to br I forgot to bring up the chart right here. Uh, we'll get into that. I guess we can get that right now. But I haven't actually haven't um, updated it, uh, unless if this one is updated, maybe. I think Bali is still working on it, but that's all good, man. He that guy that guy is a fucking mensch. Just uh, just you just doing this, you know, do uh, uh, doing this all for the community here. Holy shit! Um, but yeah, looking at this right here. This is obviously not updated, but we're still kind of in the same area. And we do see that with the correlation coefficient applied, uh, it does seem to actually actually get price action extremely well. And we are certainly very positive correlated right now. Um, so this indicator being in this posture right now typically would suggest that it, it doesn't really have too much more far, far to go down. The problem is we can stay in this region for a while, but as we come down to major supports on, on, on our higher time frames on a macro scale, and we see sentiment indicators like this come down in this region, and also fundamental indicators suggest that uh, the, you know, you know, this, you know, this is okay. That would be a little more on the bullish side as well, or, or at least on the side of saying that maybe we don't have the momentum to break to the downside right now. We probably play at a bounce first and foremost, and then you know, and then and and then and then see and then see if we want to break to the downside. So right now, you know, still in this region right here, it's certainly certainly on the, certainly on the ex extremely fearful zone, but. As we've seen historically speaking, you know, typically those are actually bottoming areas, actually, especially during a counter macro trend uh, of which we are in right now. Um, anyways, going on over here into the expected moves chart, I forgot to talk about this as well, but it's kind of been going sideways, uh, squeezing a little bit to the upside, but but mostly going sideways. What does this mean? It doesn't really tell us anything. It tells us that we're consolidating on the lows. We're kind of in we're kind of in the midst of a ch of you know of a change, which in this case would suggest up here. But I I do think that the lower time frames actually sweep the lows once again around 9400, maybe even maybe even test the downside. Side, or sorry, the first uh, the 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 downside of the first standard deviation here at around uh, 9350, which accurately matches up with the lower end of our of our major supports um, between 9350 and 9450, and then of course the top side of the first standard deviation coming in where I'm coming in right around our next major level at about 9800. Perfect, you know, per, you know, perfectly kind of getting our current range right now. Any sort of a move below this region right here, and I do believe that we'd shoot actually not just down to the second standard deviation, but all the way down to the third. It would be a clear on break. Um, we're not just breaking structure, but we're also breaking this from a historical volatility percentile. Uh, uh, sorry, historical volatility um, uh, perspective as well, and uh, well, that's that's likely going to open up the floodgates for a more for a more severe move as we see volatility expand once again. Because remember, all those all those metrics are coming down a lot right now, so that's going to actually give it the impetus to to reach you know a lower level like this. Um, by the same token, to the upside, I would not be looking for the same thing. If we actually took out this area right here, I'd just be looking for the next level to be really be hit. Um, so yeah. Anyways, going back on into the charts right now, and what else do I want to talk about? Let's talk about the Bitcoin dominance chart now. Ha, there we go. All right, Bitcoin dominance right here on the good old crypto cap, good old crypto crap. God damn, man. Um, uh, 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 bleh, where am I right now? There we are. Uh, yes, okay, weekly. Uh, still above the white 200 moon average on the weekly right here. If we do close this weekly, which again, this one closes at uh, 8 p.m. Eastern time later tonight, um, anywhere above the 71 marker, or especially, or, or even 70 spot seven, uh, this is going to be a first open and close above the white twin and simple moving average, technically ever. But more importantly, this this to me would would kind of open up the doorway for us moving much higher towards the 77 or 78 percent right here. Now. The problem for this, and okay, it's, it's it's a problem, but also a blessing in a sense, if you do want to trade alts. It kind of makes trading alts easier if you want to trade them versus Satoshis, right? Because you don't have to be you don't have to worry about us well if you're not worried about us dollar value then it makes it easier right <laughs> it makes it easier in that point but if you just if you just want some winning trades you don't care about us dollar value trade the dominance chart against alts there you go um but you know looking at this to explode it doesn't tell us that bitcoin in us dollar valuation is going to go up or down but it does tell us that 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 alts are likely to get cream pot if we do see that and uh i mean moving up you know moving up another like five six percent i mean that would be absolutely devastating going down to a lower time frame to me it's still likely low 
looks. Come on, load it. Trading view. There you go. Still looks to me like we are kind of creating an ascending triangle right here. Uh, base support right around the yellow 20 bucks bench moving average rising at around the 7100 level. So sorry, the 71% region, which would obviously be above the white 200 simple on the weekly. So we have major structural support coming in this region as you know as the dominance chart kind of grinds it up in a bullish formation. To me, this looks like it wants to break to the upside. We said that this move was likely to pop back up to 71.5%. We got that, and I do think that it marches onwards and upwards here towards 72.5% towards this prior high right here. And then we'll kind of see if this one, and then, I mean, if that leads on to the weekly, then we're probably going to see that move, you know, just slowly but surely happen over the next few months, um, which is going to spell a lot of disaster for altcoins. By the same token, uh, I'd really only get bullish on altcoins if we actually took out this level right here at around the 71% um, percent region, as I'd destroy this as an ascending triangle, uh, as an ascending triangle so to get rid of the immediate bull case, and I'd be looking for this to come back down to like maybe the 69% region right here, and that'd probably benefit alts. So I'm uh, I'm going to go check out my altcoin index called Cardano right now, and I'm expecting him to look kind of sick, and he looks pretty fucking sick. Um, sick, not in like the sick, nasty way, like the like the cool way, but sick as in like he needs a fucking green dildo stat, baby. This one's in trouble. Holy shit, below all major moving averages right here. Let's see what I'm to also to say. Oh my god, <laughs> daily soaks, plenty of room to go to the downside. Daily RSI getting rejected by the oh my oh, oh Jesus, this this, uh, this 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 is very very scary. Um, I'd be looking for Cartania to probably come back down to like the 430 ish region, maybe even the prior lows at like 400 even, and then we'll kind of reassess from there again it, you know it just looks like another just looks like another lower high uh, in, in in a series of lower highs going to a weekly i mean it, it, it looks even more piss poor than that right not even able to test a red 10 simple on the weekly i mean that's ah oh, man weakness my friends weakness as look at my hair and holy shit my hair looks like my hair looks good today <laughs> anyways um cool yeah so all coins not looking all that hot to me right now. Uh, could I change my opinion on that? I mean, just, I guess if if we if we could close the daily doodle, maybe back above 500 satoshis, and I'd be looking for the, for 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 something else to happen. Likely, maybe back, uh, may, you know, maybe I fall through all the way back up to like six, you know, another hundred satoshis up, like 640, 650. Uh, but man, I am uh, I'm, I'm, I'm I wouldn't be so optimistic with these things right now. It looks very similar. I mean, it just looks like this, you know, these little lemmings like marching up a cliff just to uh, parachute off. So not so hot right there. Let's go check out the other two top shit coins, uh, Mr. Buterall and Mrs. Litecoin. I think in no particular order, we'll do Mr. Buterall. And Mr. Buterall still hanging on the lows, really not looking hot here. And of course, uh, we did break this to sending triangle right here to the downside. And I forgot to do a measure move on that or did, or maybe I already have, but um, but let's see what this would suggest. I'm just just out of curiosity. Okay, so it would suggest that we actually do te uh, take a stab down towards that 162-ish level. But this 162-ish level, as this chart gets extremely convoluted here, um, is kind of synonymous with this bottom support of the falling pizza, if you want to call it that a falling wedge if you're not familiar with 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 cave terminology i suppose um but uh i really dislike falling wedges or or any wedges of any of, of any shapes and sizes um and more importantly, you know, if this area does break to the downside, then it destroys any sort of, you know, any, you know, any sort of a real bullish case uh, below 162. But technically, the bulls would still be looking at it something like this. As a, as technically, yes, it is. It, it it certainly is a falling wedge. I mean, we have the right volume signature on this. We have the right size. We have the right shape. We have the right. Um, we, you'd expect to see what we see on the oscillators right now. Uh, daily stokes coming down all the way. Daily RSI probably creating some sort of divergences here. Mm, actually, no, no divergences. So maybe not. Uh, and historic volatility percentile getting extremely low on the daily as well so we are pushing for a big move here and i think that the way that you trade this one is, is basically the same right if we br if we essentially just even break this level right here uh any so any sort of a daily total close actually I'll, I'll keep it where it was at around 160 now nah, we'll keep it we'll, we'll we'll put it here 163 and a half if we see any sort of a daily total close below there i'd be looking i'd be looking for this to fall flat in his face down towards 145 and then probably 125 um by the same token, if it can just kind of grind itself out here and kind of flip itself back around, maybe take out this 180 resistance right here. Technically, this would have a pretty massive measure move, actually, probably all the way back up into like the 280s, I'd imagine, something like this. These ones are never that good, though. Uh, yeah, actually, about 260 to 270-ish region, uh, somewhere right around here. So that is still that is still kind of under construction, but there is, I suppose, <laughs> I suppose if you really want to bring up the hopium, maybe a little bit there. Uh, weekly looks absolutely sick um the problem the problem is all the higher time frames on these altcoins uh this is this is the monthly for mr buterall below all major i mean there's not really too many major, major moving averages here but below all major moving averages right now and uh just does not just does not look hot right there i do not like that signature uh let's go check out uh mrs litecoin this is like when same thing closing below closing below both the yellow 21 and the red 10 simple I, I really hate what i see here actually um so we can go down to the lower time frames but you know keeping that in mind i ugh. 
I mean, yeah, we have a nice base of support where we're currently at right now, which is also going to be the weekly 200 simple, or sorry, the 200 exponential moving average on the weekly. Let me let me make sure. Um, sorry, it's not going to be on this one. We need to go to one with more price action history. And there we go. Okay, yeah, you can see it coming in right here, right around that $63 region. Um, so that tells me that we probably do bounce off this region on the first pass. I don't think that we're going to just fly through the 200 exponential moving average on the first pass. But... The way that the monthly is kind of situated right now doesn't look all that healthy, doesn't look all that strong, not the most confidence-inducing of all time. And more importantly, uh, while I do think that we bounce off this area, you know, the bounce in, in order for the bounce to really do anything of note, and this is kind of scary, it needs to get back above 80 bucks for me um, it ba in, in, and basically retain it on like a monthly closing basis, preferably. But but we'll start with a weekly. And if that, you know, if that would be okay, that'd be great. Uh, but as you can see here, I mean, even if we pop back up to this region, it's still going to be resistance. I mean, that's makes it very, 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 very difficult. Um, so yeah, going back to the daily, I mean, we do see the kind of the same posturing on, on momentum oscillators. We see daily Stokes actually down, but weak down. We see daily historical volatility percentile extremely low. This thing is set to explode right now. If it explodes to the downside, we will see, we will likely see this thing come all the way back down to like 45 bucks and maybe beyond. Um, and what about daily jewel? No, I was going to say, it, it looks like it might've been running up for a buy signal. No, it's not, it, or at least not right now, but perhaps in the future. Um, anyways, uh, I'm, I'm just curious what the other altcoins look like on the, on the monthlies. Like, how are these closes? Uh, so far, Mr. Buterall and Mrs. Litecoin, very, very bad. This is, this is a stellar, terrible, uh, Monero, um, pretty bad, but not as bad as the other ones. Uh, uh, what's this one? Ripple, Ripple, pretty bad, uh, closing at a new, uh, you know, at a new low for the monthly, um, from the last like year and a half. Uh, but I actually, actually, I kind of want to look in the lower time frames here. What's this one? What's this one kind of shaping up to be? I'm, I'm curious. Motherfucker, man, this is taking so long to uh, to load. Uh, yeah, just looks like just looks like stair, stair stepping down. Maybe another test back down to uh, 24 and a half cent. Um, let's go check out Mr. EOS on the monthly and see what he's done. What has he done? He's given up his whole. I mean, this just looks like another lower high. It looks really bad. Uh, Neo, uh, lower high. Tron, lower high. I mean, that one's almost printing a lower low now too. Bcash, lower high. Zcash, lower high and lower low. I mean, that's that's as bad as it gets. That's probably the worst one right there uh, out of the top 10. Uh, and then BMB actually holding it up still above the red 10 simple, so not bad. Um, but taking a pretty big nosedive there at the end of the, uh, at the, end of the month. God damn, man. Anyways, I'm going to start to wrap this bitch up for, uh, for Bitcoin um, overall. Uh, still looking at the, kind of the same areas as far as the as far as even the lower time frames go, but also the higher in the macro time frames. Uh, 93, 9350 to 9450ish region right here. It's our bottom our bottom left support. If that area does break, I'd be looking for you know those next targets to get hidden succession. Um, take them one step at a time, of course. And uh, and while I do think that the lower times actually come back down here, probably probably even today or tomorrow. Uh, I actually don't think that it has momentum to break it just yet. I do think that we actually that we actually bounce off this region, and probably pop back up here, and then the game begins once again. If Bitcoin can actually take out 9,800 or 9,850 to the upside, even on like a four-hour double close, I'll be looking for this to actually come back and pop up all the way into like the 10, 4, 10, 5 region here and test this region. Again, that still wouldn't change this from being a sending triangle. It's not really until we get back above 11,000 where that where that'll where that whole discussion starts to uh, kind of fade away. Um, so right now, you know, bulls have a lot of work to do, and uh, Bitcoin kind of under pressure but I don't necessarily feel like it has the momentum to break just yet. Um, as far as the higher time frame things say, you know, we do have, we, we do have a few things to kind of suggesting some hopium still uh, from the longer term perspective. So that's what I keep an eye on. But, uh, but for now, you know, I, I, I really keep an agnostic kind of view on Bitcoin. Um, even if you are bearish, you know, e, you know, even if you are looking for this breakdown, I do still think that it kind of bounces here. Um, and then, uh, and then we'll come back and reassess. So let's see how, let's see how far this next one gets us. But so far, you know, the, 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 the bounce from yesterday night was pretty fucking weak. I mean, Jesus Christ, man, 300 bucks. That's, you know, yeah, the target was met, but man, you really want to see it kind of consolidate at a higher level and then try again and actually break through it. We didn't, we didn't necessarily get that. So with that said, I'll be, I'll be kind of, I'll, I'll be signing off now. I'm going to, I'm ready to go, uh, eat a shit ton of food. I'm very, very hungry myself. As you probably can tell my brain not working all that, uh, all that fast this morning, but Gonna, gonna, gonna take care of that in just a second. So I will, uh, I'll be signing off with that. Do you want to wish you well? Do you want to wish you the best of the best? The happiest of the happiest, of course, as well. Take care and see you soon.